let's calculate the key some energy for a specific example. So we've got some water, some liquid water, and we're going to zoom in on two particular water molecules that are separated by 10 nanometers. And so the, the picture we'd have here is we have uh, some water molecule of interest and some other water molecule of interest. And we have uh, a lot of other water molecules that we're not really interested in, but they are just serving to separate the other two. And because they're between the water molecules of interest, we're going to have to take their dielectric constant into, uh, into account. Uh, and there's certainly room to have water molecules in here because we know the uh, radius of a water molecule is, you know, we could say it's on the order of uh, a couple of angstroms. So uh, if we have uh, 10 nanometers, we have room for dozens and dozens of water molecules in between here. Okay, so let's go ahead and use the Keesum potential. So we know the Keesum potential is negative two thirds the dipole moment of one molecule, dipole moment of the other molecule, and that is to the fourth. Beep. And that is squared. And we have, now in this case, the two water molecules, of course, have the same dipole moment. Then we have the collection of dielectric constants. So the vacuum permittivity and the uh, dielectric constant of the solvent separating the molecules. And then we have thermal energy and the distance separating the two molecules to the sixth. Okay, so we need to make sure we have all these things. We have the distance was 10 nanometers. We have the temperature was 298K. We need to look up the dipole moment of water. And we see that it's 1.85 Debye. So we're going to want to convert that to SI units so that we can cancel everything. And that's all we need. So let's go ahead and, and do the conversion and plug in the numbers. Well, we can do the conversion first. So we have 1.85 Debye. We want to get rid of Debye, so 1 Debye is 3.34, 10 to the negative 30 Coulomb meters. So we cancel Debye's and we get that this comes out to 6.18, 10 negative 30 Coulomb meters. Okay, so we're ready to plug everything in now. One last thing before we go on, we have to look up the dielectric constant of water and at room temperature, it's around 78.5. Okay, so we're ready to solve the problem. So we'll plug in the numbers. And before we actually get a number, we should cancel the units just to make sure the units come out. So in the top, we have coulombs to the fourth. We have meters to the fourth. On the bottom, we have coulombs squared squared, so coulombs to the fourth. We've got, on the bottom of the bottom, so we can put it up on the top, we've got joules squared and meters squared. Then over here, we've got joules on the bottom and kelvins on the bottom of the bottom, so we put that on top. Also have kelvins over here on the bottom and meters to the sixth. So we should be able to cancel this. So we get rid of the coulombs first. We've got meters to the fourth and the second, so we can get rid of meters to the sixth. And we can get rid of kelvins. And the last thing that leaves is that we have one unit of joules here, two up here, so we're left with joules, and we're trying to calculate potential energy, so that, that's great. This comes out to 3.1 times 10 to the negative 33 joules. That's a really small energy. That's 
roughly uh, more, it's more than 10 orders of magnitude smaller than kT. But it tells us if we have two dipoles and they're separated by some polar fluid like water by several molecular diameters, that interaction between those dipoles is extremely weak. So dipole, dipole attraction doesn't really become important until molecules begin to approach one another.